fits in but I guess I'll make it a dandelion lesson because um, I do use this in some of my watercolor meditations and today I wanted to talk to you about the art of grinding ink which is also a very meditative process and traditionally Chinese and Japanese calligraphers and, and other calligraphers use um, a sazuri and an inkstone to grind their ink for calligraphy and also for sumi-e painting. And it's a beautiful tradition. And I have actually been doing this longer than I have been painting with watercolors and drawing. Um, I've been doing this a long time as part of a, a meditative practice. And I find it really relaxing and, and, a, and a beautiful ritual. So I wanted to tell you about the parts, and it's funny, you know, I have my, my I have at my studio, I have a tray. It's a green stoneware tray that I purchased at Bennington Potters, and I have all of my accout accoutrement <laughs> for this practice. Um, it has very specific uh, tools, and I don't have those here, but this is, this is basically it. So typically I have a little tiny water pot. It's, it's this big and it's round and it's white porcelain with blue painting on it <clears throat> and it has a tiny little hole on top and then a spout and what you do is you submerge it into water it fills up and then you hold your finger um, over the hole and, and you, you can very carefully um, drop water into the inkstone one drop at a time and I don't know the name of that um, but anyways <clears throat> So this, I, I want to say this started before the Song Dynasty, before 960. Um, it's a very old practice, but this is called a suzuri. And um, it's, a sto it's an ink stone, and it's a stone mortar for the grinding and containment of ink, for sumi-e ink. So <clears throat> in... I, all of my Sazuri stones are made out of stone. Um, I have probably five of them. This is my favorite. It has a dragon on the top. It's hand carved and it's very heavy. And when you lift the lid, I like this one because it has a lid um, that you can keep the ink fresh for, for at least a day. And then inside it has this little well for you to grind the ink and then you can spill it off into the little moat around the edges and then use the ink from there. So you can keep making more as you need it and then spill it off into the edges. I really like it. Um, so that is a Sazuri. <clears throat> and I also have an ink stone. I've got three ink stones and this is my favorite. I have no idea what this means or what kind it is. I just purchased it at an art supply store in Rochester. Um, but ink stones are made from, this one I believe is pine soot. And traditionally they're made from the soot or resin of pine trees. And if you smell them, they have a beautiful aroma, to me anyways. And they smell very resinous and like um, pine soot. There is a pine aroma to it. And they're usually beautifully decorated. Um, this one was not terribly expensive. It was under ten dollars. Um, you can pay several hundred dollars for an ink stone. Some of them are aged hundreds of years and they're very precious. Um, for my purposes, this is fine. Um, and I even have one that was less than five dollars. Um, there is a difference in the quality though. I have one ink stone that's sort of an oval shape that's really beautiful at my studio and it was $25 and you can really see the difference in the ink for sure um, but again for my purposes this is fine um, and it's really beautiful and I treasure it 
So that's my ink stone. And they always come in these lovely little boxes. And I have another box here that I actually use. This is another ink stone box that I use to keep um, my nibs in for pen and ink drawings. So this was an ink stone that I used up a long time ago and I just kept the box. So there's always a repurposing of the beautiful boxes. So I have my Suzuri and my ink stone and I have um, my uh, one of my calligraphy brushes. Uh, it has a dark bristle, it's um, rather stiff. And then I have a little pot of water. And so I begin by putting just a couple drops and because I don't have my little pot, I'm gonna use my brush. And I'm just gonna put four drops. One, two, three, four. And it doesn't seem like a lot, but actually it makes quite a bit of ink. That really wasn't a full drop there. So I'm going to show you how to grind the ink and I usually grind for about four and a half minutes. Um, I have a, a timer set on my phone that has um, lovely music and, and when the timer goes off it's like a beautiful Tibetan bowl. And so I use that and that tells me when I'm done because once I begin, it's a very meditative process and I sort of lose track of time. Um, but I'm just gonna show it to you for just a moment and then I'm gonna turn the video off and finish and then I'll come back. But basically, so when I'm grinding ink, I usually put on music, beautiful music and I begin and I, I set my intentions and I put the ink stone into the water and I begin to move it in a circular I go counterclockwise, I don't know why, I just do. I don't think there's any, I, I, again, I'm not an expert at this, this is just my practice. Um, I'm sure there's many, many books of information if you want to be very traditional. But already you can see how far just a few drops of water goes. So it's this beautiful, just sort of circular motion. And I go slowly, and I'm putting a little bit of pressure and you can feel the ink sort of dissolving into the water. And I just continue like this until my timer goes off. If you, if you wanted to make a very light color of ink, you could stop quickly. But I find if I make a really nice full bodied ink, then I can dilute it with water and get all of the variations of gray that I need. So again, I'm just using a circular motion and the aroma is beautiful to me. It's very special. So I just continue to do this. I've seen demonstrations where people go quicker. You can go quicker if you want to. But I find even with the music that I'm listening to, it will you know, I'll sometimes go a little bit slower, a little bit faster. It just depends. So that is the basic movement. You're just moving it around and around on the sazuri and letting the ink stone dissolve into the water. And it makes a very smooth, velvety ink. So I'm going to turn the video off and complete this so you don't need to watch me do this for, for four and a half minutes. And then I will be back um, to talk some more. Hi, I just thought I'd show you the rain, the rainy day. I can't take much video because my phone will get wet, but I love rainy days. It's so beautiful. So I've been grinding for about four minutes. And as you're grinding, if you feel you need a little more water, you can add another drop. And again, with the little water dish, um, the little water container, it's very easy just to add one drop. If you don't have one, just use your, your brush and dip it into water and let one drop fall. So this is very syrupy and rich and beautiful. When I'm done with my ink, ink stick, I just blot it off on a paper towel and I put it back in its box. <clears throat> and one ink stick really lasts a long time, that is for sure. 
So before I, um, I demonstrate how this works, and actually let me find my, I'll find the palette. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I typically have this, these little flower well palettes. They have seven wells for the seven different dilutions of ink, but this one has just been used for watercolor. <clears throat> so I'll use this bigger one here, which only, only has five, but just to show you how to dilute the ink. So um, in, in Chinese culture, they have something called the four treasures of the study or the four jewels of the study. I've heard the four friends of the study. And it is an expression used to denote the brush, the brush, the ink, the paper, and the inkstone. So the brush, the, um, the inkstone, okay, the sazuri, the ink, which is the ink stick, and then the paper. And typically they use um, Schwann paper, which is rice paper. It's not really made from rice. I think it's made from mulberry fibers. Um, but I And I do sometimes use Schwann or double Schwann. But normally, with this practice, I used a paper called Hanamula in gray. And it's a cotton paper. Uh, I don't even think it's 100% cotton, but it's rather affordable, which is good for me. And it has a beautiful texture, and it comes in many, many beautiful colors. And it comes in great big sheets, and then I just tear them into quarter sheets. And I don't know if you can see the texture of this paper, but it's it's just, it's a laid texture. It's got these lines, and then the sort of woven texture on top. And I have many, many colors, and I was going to demonstrate two. This one is this beautiful, rich kind of blue, gorgeous, gorgeous color. And for me, I also um, like to add gold ink. And I do have gold calligraphy ink that I used to use, but now I tend to use my Wild Thorn um, Sun Gold Mica because it's just so beautiful. <laughs> and sometimes I'll even add other watercolors in with the ink, but you can use gold ink, any gold metallic paint um, if you want to, or just the black ink itself is so beautiful. So once your ink is, is nice and rich here, um, to use it straight from this would be very syrupy and most, most people don't. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water to it because it will still be very dark. And then just use my brush to mix it together very lightly. And if I needed a lot of ink for painting, which I never do, um, I, could, I could let it flow into the moat and then grind more. But I'm just gonna show you how black this ink is. I mean, it's super, super, super dark, all right? So what you can do to make dilutions is you can start with a little bit of ink and then you can bring it over into another well. Of course, I didn't bring a glass of water. And just add water to it to make different dilutions if you're making a sumi-e painting. Um, typically, I would make seven dilutions. So I'd, I would start with one, one dip of my brush into the ink and then put it in a well and then add one dip of water. And then go to the next well and add another dip of water and then put some in the next well and add another dip of water and then put some in the next well and add another dip of water. Of course my water's dirty, but eventually you'll get seven different strengths from black to the finest pearly gray. So that's how you would dilute it. But for the, the meditations, when I do those, I use the ink straight from the Sazori. And so, I like to just really get my brush full of ink. And for me, I get it so saturated with ink and then I lift it over my paper and I just let the ink fall and then I begin. And I never know what I'm going to do. Um, and this is just a quick demonstration but you can see how beautifully black that ink is, right? And if I wanted to, I could use a dilution with some water and just um, 
go in with water and pull out some other variations of gray within that. It's just, there's something very, very beautiful about all of the different nuances and colors. Let me just grab some water really quickly. <clears throat> interested in the tradition of Sumi'i, there, there, it's a very rich field of study and there's so, so much to learn. Um, but you don't have to, to get into it that much. If you want to, it's there. It's there for you to discover. Um, but if you just want the meditative practice of grinding the inkstone on the sazuri and then making a beautiful meditation with it, um, you don't need to do anything else. But you can see, if, like if I start with the gold, you get all sorts of nuances of gold too. When you touch it to the ink and when it dries, it's just really beautiful. Um, you can spatter ink, whatever you feel like. It doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. It's just the experience of it. And normally when I'm doing this, I'm very focused and I'm really watching what happens. On the paper and I could even if I wanted to I could introduce a little bit of another color and see what happens And then I also find that the dark iron glimmer that I love so much is really gorgeous with Sumi ink. So I can just add some little touches of it here or there. And when it dries, it gives that gorgeous shimmer. So I just wanted to kind of show you how it looks on a lighter paper like this. And again, anything goes here, you know? I mean, it's just it's just part of the practice. And the main part of the practice is the grinding of the ink. So that's how it looks on lighter paper. And then sometimes I use the darker papers and I get a totally different effect. Let me just grab more water, hold on. I'm not very prepared today. But I did this this morning and I thought, you know, I should share this with people. Other people might really enjoy this. So, I'm going to grab more of my ink from my inkstone, really saturate my brush, just roll it. I keep rolling it and rolling it until the brush is just fully saturated with the ink. And then I lift it over my paper and just let it drop. And then I just begin. Again, the ink is so black. It's so black that it just, it almost has a shine to it when it dries. It's just, <laughs> it's really beautiful.
And look how the gold sits on the paper like that. It's just stunning. And that's the dark iron glimmer, so when it dries, We'll have that shine. Yeah. So that's how it would look on darker paper. And there's all different shades in between. So you can you can experiment and see and, and mostly mm, what you're after is just this beautiful kind of visceral meditative experience with the ink stone and the sazuri and all of um, the brush and the paper all together just kind of create this beautiful experience. So that's all there is to it. And again, um, my I would say for uh, my source is a beautiful shop in Rochester, New York. They have a wonderful section of Chinese and Japanese um, calligraphy supplies. But there are many, many great websites online and I really like Blue Heron Arts, um, Henry Lee is a wonderful artist and he provides beautiful things that he imports um, and I, I do buy a lot from him as well. A uh, small family business and you can find him at blueheronarts.com and you'll find all sorts of good things. And the other thing is to look up Sazuri's and <clears throat> you'll find so many different kinds. I think there are four main kinds and then a world of differences between them so many different beautiful things from the very very simple which is also gorgeous to very ornate and hand carved scissories you could spend $15 or you could spend $50,000 I imagine I mean there there's some beautiful things out there um, but you don't have to spend a lot I this is my most precious one and I think it was $40 so and they say that there is a difference um, in quality with that too but again for my purposes, I'm not an expert at this. This is just something I do for myself, and it's really the experience more than anything. So um, I find this really beautiful, and it suits me very well, and I actually thought $40 was a lot. So, um, But I have some that were also $10 that work just as well. Um, but anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this and that maybe you will consider trying grinding your own ink and seeing where that takes you. Um, it's also beautiful just to make paintings with ink, and that's it, you know? So there's so many different nuances within the, the color black. All right, thank you very much. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I'm going to make another video today for dandelion lessons. So I'll, I'm sure I'll see you again soon. Thank you.